Ladies and gentlemen of the Joint Assembly and our honored guests, I am proud to present to you the Honorable Vincent J. Triola, National Commander of the American Legion. Please welcome. Ladies, gentlemen, distinguished members of this great body, it's truly an honor to speak to you today in this, this historic capital. We have all heard the famous saying that there are two things that are inevitable in life, death and taxes. Well, that may be so, but I want to thank this legislature and Governor McMaster for at least making taxes less burdensome, bur burdensome for military retirees and surviving spouses. Thanks to the hard work of the men and women of the legislature, military pensions are now exempt from South Carolina taxes. Thank you. This sends exactly the right message to veterans searching for a state to call home after a career of military service. Even before the governor signed the Workforce Enhancement and Military Recognition Act on May 13th, the Palmetto State earned a well-deserved reputation as a welcoming community for American heroes. South Carolina had already given veterans state employment preferences, education and tuition assistance, vehicle tags, as well as hunting and fishing license privileges. You have also expanded property tax exemptions to include surviving spouses of disabled veterans. Simply put, when it comes to the treatment of veterans, this state gets it. Moreover, South Carolina is a major contributor to America's military strength. With eight major military installations and numerous smaller facilities within your borders. The annual economic impact of the military community here is estimated to be $34.3 billion, while translating into more than a quarter million jobs. You have the 10th highest density of service members in the country, and nearly 400,000 veterans call South Carolina home. 23,000 of South Carolina's veterans are legionnaires, serving local communities through more than 160 posts. But it isn't just veterans in the military who American Legion families serve. They are awarding scholarships, conducting some of the finest youth programs in the country, and educating the next generation of South Carolin Carolinians on the importance of patriotism and good citizenship. On July 11th, the national team from the American Legion met with veterans and VA representatives at Post 130 in Casey. It was our first system worth saving town hall since before the COVID-19 pandemic. Included in the visit was a tour of the Columbia VA Medical Center. The VA healthcare system has made some remarkable improvements over the last decade. The American Legion is vigilant to ensure the VA serves veterans as well as veterans have served this country. We will point out the VA mistakes and we will often be loud in doing so. But we also recognize that VA usually provides outstanding care and must be fully funded so veterans can have access to this needed benefit. Last Wednesday, I testified before a joint session of senators and representatives in the US Congress. I told them that the number one priority of the American Legion is stopping veteran suicide. Every member of this legislature Indeed, every American can help us with this effort. I have seen estimates that 17 veterans per day take their own lives. I've seen another study that says it's more than 40. The number is more likely somewhere in between. Sometimes their military service was overlooked. Other suicides are mistakenly ruled as accidental overdoses. In other words, the statistics are all over the place. As far as the American Legion is concerned, the most important number to remember is one, as in be the one to stop it. Be the one to discuss a topic that for years went unmentioned in polite society. Be the one to reach out to a veteran who may be struggling. Be the one to encourage the veteran to seek help. Be the one to follow up with the veteran to let him or her know that they are not forgotten. Be the one to convince a veteran 
that life is worth living and that suicide is absolutely not an option. In other words, be the one to save one. Very few of us are professional therapists, which is why we welcome the announcement that as of January 2023, any veteran in suicidal crisis can be seen at any VA or non-VA healthcare facility free of charge. The veteran does not even have to be enrolled in the VA system for this benefit. It includes up to 30 days of inpatient care or 90 days of outpatient care at any VA or non-VA facility. As elected officials and leaders in your districts, you have a large platform. Please use it to share the new crisis hotline number, 988. We need to ensure that 988 is as widely known as 911. In fact, a 988 call today can help prevent a 911 call tomorrow. For several years now, the American Legion has conducted buddy check efforts in which veterans reach out to other veterans to foster friendship and wellness. Peer support works. Thanks to congressional action, I'm pleased to say that this year, the United States Department of Veterans Affairs will be designating annual buddy check weeks nationwide. Veterans value courage. If you can help the American Legion remove the stigma associated with PTSD and depression, and if you can help us make the case that seeking mental wellness is courageous, then my time to, to, with you today has been well spent. South Carolina not only believes in supporting those who served, but through great institutions like the Citadel, you are producing tomorrow's defenders of freedom. I am pleased to see that last fall, the Citadel welcomed its first cadet recruits from Ukraine. The American Legion does not support the deployment of US troops to that war-torn nation, but we do support arming and assisting the Ukrainian people in their fight for survival. The international community, and especially our allies, must use all diplomatic and economic tools at our collective disposal to stop Russian aggression. We remain equally concerned with the pro provocations of communist China. Every year, the American Legion hosts representatives from the Taiwan Veterans Affairs Council at our national convention. I was briefed by senior US military commanders during my visits to Okinawa and Hawaii this past December. The military and economic threats presented by China and the saber rattling by North Korea should not just concern the people of the Indo-Pacific region, but Americans here in the homeland. For my friends who believe that we spend too much money on our, of our budget on national defense, I encourage you to travel abroad. Visit Korea's demilitarized zone. Attend a Pearl Harbor observance and reflect on what could happen. The American Legion believes that a strong defense is not just wise policy, but a constitutionally mandated imperative. We must not jeopardize our readiness through feel-good budgetary cuts. I just reiterated the many ways in which South Carolina shows its appreciation for veterans. We owe it to the next generation of veterans to ensure that they are always the best trained, best equipped, and best armed military force on the planet. Yesterday, I had the honor of visiting Shore Air Force Base in Fort Jackson. Through Sum though Sumter is a close drive from Columbia, when it comes to housing, they are worlds apart. While it is the federal government allocates the housing allowance for members of the family of the military, service members at Shaw received about $300 a month less in basic housing allowance than those at Fort Jackson. More concerning is the lack of affordable housing for military members in the Sumter community. If the state were to incentivize landlords to give our military a break on rent, they will find service members make ideal tenants. Another issue is a lack of affordable daycare. A common complaint that we heard was about the onerous regulatory process that goes with operating a daycare. We all want safety for our children, but costs should go down and options should go up. The future of the U.S. Army truly runs through the state. Fort Jackson is not just a basic training camp, it conducts the future soldier prep course, where men and women strengthen their intellectual, physical, and nutritional fitness before they even enter basic training. This is designed to overcome shortfalls that may hinder one's ability to pass recruit training. Fort Jackson is also the home of the United States Army's Drill Sergeant Academy. The men and women at this school epitomize leadership. They soldier the, the enormous responsibility of creating U.S. soldiers. They do so with great strength, 
skill, firmness, and fairness. When it comes to U.S. military representation in this state, South Carolina should be proud. While I'm a, I am here, I would like to extend my congratulations to Jonathan Beering. Jonathan is a senior at Panopolis High School in Panopolis, South Carolina. I just saw Jonathan last week in Washington. He is one of 10 recipients of a Samsung American Legion scholarship. It is a well-deserved honor for the young man who is the great grandson of a Korean War Navy veteran. More than 4,600 high school juniors nationwide applied for the $10,000 scholarship, which is awarded to students who are descendants of veterans and have met standards of academic excellence and community service. Jonathan is also a graduate of the American Legion Department of South Carolina Boys State Program. Now, if you would allow me for one moment to call on two members of this distinguished body who have proven that they are not only great lawmakers, but they are advocates for those who have served. They have been designated by the American Legion Department of South Carolina as the outstanding Legion Department of South Car as, as outstanding members of the legislature for 2023. They are true friends of veterans and the American Legion. Senator George Chip Campson, the third, and Representative Matthew W. Lieber, would you please join me? The American Legion Department of South Carolina Special Legislative Award presented to Senator George E. Campson III in recognition of and appreciation for his many years of outstanding service to his community, state, and nation, dated March 8, 2023. Congratulations, Senator. Thank you. Congratulations, Senator Campson and Representative Lieber. We appreciate all you do on behalf of veterans. Thank you so much, South Carolina legislature. God bless you, God bless America, and God bless South Carolina. Thank you.